So Real Pixels is my new asset pack available on Gumroad and Blender Market, links in the description. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how it works. So first of all, it is a pixel shader, which just allows you to make these really realistic pixel renderings as if your image was a vintage screen. So the powerful thing about this is that you can place this on a computer monitor, like I did in my 30 day art film project. Look at this, for example, this is something you'd be able to make with this. I just think this is a really cool effect. So to install this, simply download the file and right click and let's go extract all. And now you have a folder within a folder and inside the folder you got the blend file and some asset catalog files for the asset browser. So I do have a blend file here with a vintage computer that I made. So I'm just going to make a plane. So to install real pixels, I'm going to go F4 preferences. And down here at the bottom at file paths, you can see you have asset libraries. So I'm going to click this little plus icon and I saved it to my desktop. So let's just find this and click until there's nothing left in the folder. And let's go add asset library. So now you can exit this. And now I want to split my viewport in half. So I'm just going to click and drag up here. And I want to set this editor type to asset browser. And let's change it from all to real pixels. And here you can see the five screen presets. We got two CRT panels and we got two LCD and then we got one OLED. So here's my plane. I'm going to start by just clicking and dragging the CRT TV, for example. And the shader pack works in both EV and cycles, but I want to do cycles. So let's set it to rendered view. And here you can see you have the pixels. And now if I split this in half one more time, now you can set this editor type to shader editor and press N to get rid of this panel. And here you can see you have the pixel controller. So this is the pixel controller where you can control all the different parameters. So here you, for example, got the resolution of the pixels and you got the lead height. You can just click and drag on these sliders. And if you zoom in, you can see that you got this roundness where you can change it from being sharp to round. And then you have the black area, which essentially is the pixel size. And then you have this thing called smoothness. Hang on, let me just turn off the compositor. So the smoothness allows you to control how smooth each pixel is. And this is easier to see when you have a lower brightness. Here you can see you have these real sharp edges, then they get smoother. And then this part is really cool, the scratches, because it's all about making these uniform pixels look a little bit less uniform. And the scratches are really nice to just do that. So when you increase the resolution, you will sometimes get a little bit of scratches here and there, and it just really helps. Now you might be wondering, how do you import your own texture? Because with this pixel controller, there is no input for the image. Here's the smart part. All these five presets, they use the same node group. So that means that if you press tab to enter this node group, here you can access the screen image. So if you change the screen image on one preset, they will change on all the presets which is really handy because then you can super easily just change the sub pixel geometry type to something else without losing your texture. It's really handy. So by default, it's set to RGB. So simply hold down control and click and drag up here to the image. And now you can see you have this default texture. And now if you press tab to go back to the pixel controller, now you can increase the resolution and you can change the lead height. And here's the beautiful part. You can take any of the presets and simply click and drag and they just work. It's a really powerful setup. So let's tweak this a little bit more. So I'm gonna use the LCD standard and I'm gonna have a look at these offset settings. So here you can see we have these pixels and you can, for example, offset them on the red channel or the green channel Y axis or maybe every other row. And then you can also offset them on the X axis, but be careful because if you manipulate the red too much or the green, it will break a little bit. So you can see you have to be a little bit careful with this. Okay, so I'm gonna move the screen into the computer like this. Let's turn over to the advanced part. So here you can see you have this slider called pixel line. And when it's set to zero, it's off. But if you set it to one, you have this really bright line of pixels. And this is an effect where something might get broken on an old CRT monitor. You can change this, the brightness. And you can essentially make this line that is just broken like this, which sometimes happen on these old TVs. And this next part is really cool. This thing is the scan line. So if you press space to play the animation, you can enable the scan line. Look at that. This is just a slow motion scan line of how an actual CRT image is being displayed on the monitor. And then you can increase the speed and you can increase it a little bit more. And if you change the fall off, you can see that this is starting to look pretty realistic. I'm not sure if you've ever tried to actually film a CRT monitor, but it often looks really similar to something like this. 
And then you have dead pixels, this slider, which just controls how many dead pixels you have. So let's set it to 0.001, for example. And then you just might have one over here and then you can change the seed. So now we have like one here, one here. Pretty nice to get some randomness. And then you have pixel flicker, which is actually enabled by default just a little bit. If you zoom in here, you can see. I'm not sure if you can see this. Let me try and increase it. You can see that there's this flickering. The screen is just a little bit alive. See that? It's basically white noise behind the pixels. And now here's a bonus feature, which is mostly intended for these LCD and the OLED up here, because if you want to use this, you have to set the LED height to one. And now you can see you have this second offset, which just shifts. So you get this really cool diagonal pattern. But if you have the LED height on something else than one, you can see that it will, it will break. So uh, yeah, this is intended for square or round pixels. So you can see it here in the uh, X01 LCD. Here you can see you have this beautiful, really interesting diagonal pattern. Yeah, this is such a cool effect. And if you make it really bright, this will actually light up your scene. Look at how powerful this is. So the coolest thing with real pixels is that it doesn't only support still images, it also supports animations. So I have made this simple curve animation. It's a square video because that's the format that works the best with this shader. And now if you go to the pixel controller, you can press tab and you can see the screen image here. Now, if you unlink this data block by pressing X and now you can go open, let's just set this to be my simple curve animation. Now here you can see we have the video. Now the problem is that this doesn't update. If you press play, nothing happens. And that's because Blender just thinks this is one frame. So to fix this, press N to bring up this panel, select the texture, go to properties, and then you can click this little refresh icon and it will set it to be the correct amount of frames and then enable auto refresh and cyclic. So now when I press play, this works as a shader. And now this is where things get interesting because now we have an actual animation on our screen. So I wanna increase the power, let's set it to 50. Here you can see, look at this beautiful already. You can see there's a little bit of compression artifacts here from the video file itself. And yeah, this is looking really cool. So now what I wanna do is that I wanna make this a little bit more realistic. So I wanna press tab to go to edit mode, right click, subdivide, and let's set the number of cuts to 11. So now our screen has just a little bit more geometry. Let's select the vertex in the middle here and let's enable proportional editing. And then you can press G and Y and scroll a little bit. So now you can see you can make this round screen shape. And now let's move this back in. There you can see, now it pops out like that, really cool. And if you want more vertices, you can press Control 2 to add a subdivision surface modifier and right click set the shading to smooth. So now we have this cool old fashioned monitor where the glass sort of expands, which is a really cool effect. But this is just a screen. We wanna add some glass in front of this. So let's press Shift D and let's move it on the Y axis just a little bit. So now here you can see we both have our screen and then we're going to turn this into glass. So let's go to material properties and let's unlink this data block and let's go a new material. Let's call this glass. Let's set it to be a glass shader and let's lower the roughness a little bit. And now in the world properties, I want to add an environment texture. So if you have the node wrangler add-on enabled, you can just click on the background node and go control T and let's import an environment texture. I got this one from HDRI Haven called Pine Attic. And let's set the strength to one. And now look at this. If we now make a camera, shift A camera, and then control alt and at zero. Now let me zoom in here. We add some depth of field. And then if you wanna be extra fancy, we can add just a little bit of um, displacement texture. And now this is getting a little bit crazy, so I don't expect you to follow every single step of this process, but I just wanna show you the power of using an animated texture with glass. So here you can see, now you have this screen is being updated and we have a little bit of a displacement on the glass. Yeah, I think this is looking really cool. So now we have our animated texture below the screen. It looks like this beautiful pixelated effect. And if you select the glass and press H to hide it, so now we only have the screen again, you can still use the presets. So now you can just take another preset and click and drag it down, change the resolution. And now you just have another sub pixel pattern that just looks really cool below the glass. Look at this, look at how cool this looks close up. This is so cool. So yeah, those are all the features of Real Pixels. Let me know if you have any questions and I am really looking forward to see what you'll create with this. Thanks for watching.